things weird. And as we say in Harambe, twin day. That means let's go. Chamba, everybody. My name is Deanna. I'm going to be your safari driver for the day through Harambe Wildlife Preserve. If you look up above you, you're going to see an animal spotting guide. This guide will help you identify some of the animals that we might be seeing throughout our journey. Now, we're not going to see all of those animals, but we do usually have some pretty good luck. And this is a photo safari. So feel free to have those cameras out and ready to take as many pictures as you like. Just hang on to them tightly, folks. And we are not allowed to stop at any time to pick up lost items. Remember, these are wild animals out here. Now, I would recommend an action or sport setting for those cameras so you can get some good pictures of all of those quick moving animals. If you look very carefully, way out there on the right, you might see some brown movement in some bushes. It's actually an okapi. Okapis have stripes on their legs, just like zebras. They're actually related to giraffe. And they do have very long purple tongues, just like giraffe. We're heading over to a very important gathering place for the animals, that's the watering hole. It's our best chance at seeing some of the more rare species, like the black rhino. So keep an eye out for them. I wouldn't be super surprised if we didn't see any, because they are poached for their horns. And there are less than 5,000 of them left in the entire world. Oh, look, there's one over there on the left. We are working very hard to protect those black rhinos. Through conservation efforts, we're able to help them out by providing them with some security and veterinary care. I'll look very carefully here on the left. There's some bongos out there. They're also known as the ghosts of the forest because they are so good at hiding. The more gray colored antelope are the greater kudu. They're the second tallest antelope in Africa. Those are females there, we can tell because they don't have horns. Only the male greater kudu have horns, while both female and male bongos have horns. Now we're gonna head on over to the Safi River next. That'll be our best chance at Find it some hippos. Now make sure to look carefully for them in the water. They're good swimmers, but they generally prefer to walk along the bottom of the riverbed. They can hold their breath for about five to eight minutes. <laughs> That's a very long time. So if you do see any bubbles or shadows or any kind of movement out under that water, Probably some of those hippos walking along the bottom. Now, there's some birds at the surface though and on the island. Those are the pink backed pelicans. They get that name because their backs kind of turn a pinkish color during mating season. You might not think that a hippo would be able to move very fast. The hippos can run at about 35 miles per hour. Oh, it looks like there's some hippos out there on the left. One walking up out of the water behind the tree. Hippos are herbivores. They just see a bunch of plants, all kinds of grass, hay, and leaves. Hi. 
Now, folks, we are also coming up to a rickety old bridge, and we're about to go over some Nile crocodile. They can grow to be 20 feet long. They are reptiles, so they're exothermic. They can hold their jaws open to help cool themselves off. And they can also put about 2,000 pounds of pressure per score into the jaws. Oh, we're just going to keep on moving. And we're going to be leaving the forest area now and heading over to the west savanna up ahead. Now, the savanna is going to be a completely different ecosystem with completely different animals living in it. Now, you know what, folks? Speaking of different, coming up ahead of us is a baobab tree, also known as an upside-down tree. Because it looks like somebody picked it up and then put it back down to the ground upside down. So its roots are sticking straight up in the sky. There are going to be several of them throughout our journey, so make sure to keep an eye out for us. But folks, we are coming up to the best view on the reserve. This is the Serengeti grasslands. They stretch for hundreds of miles across East Africa, serving as a superhighway for millions of migrating animals each year, including those giraffe that are up ahead. These are all Maasai giraffes that live around here. When we do get closer to them, make sure to look carefully at the patterns of their spots. You'll see that Maasai giraffes have jagged edges to their spots, kind of like puzzle pieces. Those animals with the very large white horns are the Ancoli cattle. They're the only domesticated animals on the reserve. Their horns can be about 20 inches in circumference at the base. And even though their horns are very large, they're not quite as heavy as you'd expect them to be. They have a honeycomb structure on the inside. Oh, look there on the left, folks. There's some African wild dogs moving around. Hi. They are some of Africa's most successful pack hunters. Even more successful than large cats. They don't bark like other dogs. They make more of a chirping or squeaking kind of sound. Well, we're going to get pretty close to the Ancoli cattle here. And that honeycomb structure not only makes them much lighter and easier to carry around all day, but also allows blood to be able to flow right through them and helps regulate their body temperature. You may have noticed the tall mounds of dirt throughout the savanna here, those are termite mounds. They can be as hard as concrete. Elephants like to use them as their personal scratching posts. Oh, we're starting to get closer to these giraffe here. Hi. They're born at about six feet tall. They can grow up to be around 20 feet tall. After all, giraffe are the tallest mammals in the world. And that 20 feet does also mean that the crocodiles can grow to be just as long as the giraffe are tall. And coming up here on our right are some white bearded wildebeest. They're a part of one of the largest migrations in Africa. When the rest all come together and lay down facing different directions so they can keep an eye out for predators and jump up and run second if necessary. There's some more giraffe way up on the hill out there on the left and some very large tan antelope coming up on our right. This is going to be the Patterson's Eland. Eland are the tallest and largest antelope in Africa. Males can grow to be six feet tall at the shoulder and weigh around 2,000 pounds. might not seem as agile as other antelope, 
but they can actually jump seven feet straight up into the air from a standstill. Well, we're gonna head on over to Monkey's Point now. It gets its name from the mandrels that live nearby. They are the largest and most colorful monkeys in Africa. Females weigh around 30 pounds, while males weigh around 100 pounds. They are often seen grooming one another as a form of social bonding. And folks, as we are gonna be making our way through Monkey's Point, we're starting to enter into some elephant country. Keep an eye out for elephant migrations. I see some mandrels on the left. Oh, and a male elephant out there on the right. Now, we know he's a male because he's by himself. Male elephants tend to like to live on their own. But both female and male African elephants have those tusks. The biggest threat to elephants is actually humans. They don't really have many natural predators because they are so big. The males can grow to be 14 thousand pounds but poaching or illegal hunting targets the elephants for their tusks which are made of ivory another big threat to the elephants is that their populations face a great deal of habitat loss that means that they're slowly losing their homes they're being developed for humans to use that can lead to some dangerous situations for both the humans and the elephants because they are being forced to share the same areas. And elephants do need to cover quite a bit of ground to reach water sources and get enough food. Uh, you know what, folks? This bridge had been having some trouble recently. Oh, gosh, only right. Your other right, guys. Come on. Lean right. A little further. A little further. We're going to just stay calm. Stay still. We're almost off this bridge. All right, good teamwork, everybody. Let's definitely not go back that way. Looks like we're going to need to get some more duct tape on that tomorrow. Now, we are coming up on some red clay rock. Elephants love to snack on this stuff. You can see some tusk marks on either side here. That is a sign that there was a whole herd of elephants in this area not too long ago. Their childhood length is very similar to a human's, but just a little bit shorter around 13 to 15 years. Female elephants stay with the herd for their entire lives. While the males do go off on their own when they mature. Remember. Notice them moving their ears quite a bit. They have very large blood vessels in their ears. When they move them back and forth, it helps cool them off up to 15 degrees. But look very carefully beneath those elephants. There's actually a little baby elephant taking a nap in between them all. They're all keeping an eye on her. They do all share the responsibility of taking care of the younger elephants. I think it's really amazing to see an elephant's bond to its family. They're very protective, very intelligent animals. Their skin may seem tough, but it's actually pretty sensitive, so they'll throw dirt and mud up on their backs to help protect them from the sun, kind of like how we use sunscreen. They also use it as their own homemade bug spray. Now well, we're coming up on some greater flamingos. They are the palest pink of all flamingo species. Every flamingo does actually hatch gray, and it takes about a year of eating brine, shrimp, and other sea creatures for them to actually get their pinkish tint. That's my favorite view on the reserve right here with the flamingos in the water, the baobab tree back there, and even the elephants in the background. I don't think there are many of you in the world that compare to that. It's pretty awesome. Now, it does look like there has been some white rhino activity in the area. Oh, yep, here they are on 
are laughing at all because there's a mud pit out there. They, they look like they were playing in it recently. Unfortunately, white rhinos are poached as well for their horns, which are also sold for a high value, really unnecessarily, because their horns that they have are made of the same substance as our hair and nails. It's called keratin. And sadly, they are even poached on some of Africa's most well-known and largest reserves. I hope there's an ostrich and some zebras out there on the way. But believe it or not, each of the zebra stripes are different from the next one. It's kind of like how fingerprints are for humans. But folks, we do really need to be proactive in helping out all of these endangered animals so we can continue to have opportunities like we're having today to get up close and personal with them and see them in a real life for years to come. They're really very sweet. And folks to look very carefully way up ahead on the hills on the left. Next to a pile of logs or a stump that's kind of fallen over. There's actually a couple cheetahs laying down. They are the fastest land mammals, reaching speeds of up to 60 miles per hour in just three seconds. And they have non-attractable claws, so just like your pet dogs, they're unable to pull their claws back into their paws. But my favorite thing about cheetahs is that they are some of the only large cats that can actually purr just like a house cat. Well, we are coming up on the Kopi Rocks here. It's a popular place for the lions to hang out. However, uh, they're generally inactive for about 18 to 20 hours of a day. So they like to spend just about as much time sleeping as giraffes spend eating. The lions are mostly only active at night. Oh, there's another white rhino here in our right. So folks, if you do really want to see lions, make sure to come and check out Night Safari. So that means that we're driving around in the dark, and that is when the lions tend to be more active. Now remember, folks, they are cats, so no guarantees, but it is much more likely to see them up and about at that hour of the day. And coming up here on our left are some warthogs. You might know Pumbaa. Pumbaa actually means foolish, and warthogs are very smart. They'll back into their burrows and keep their tusks facing outwards. It helps to protect them while they rest. Now those are some ostrich eggs coming up here on our right. Those eggs can weigh about three pounds each. They're strong enough for a grown human to be able to stand right on top of them without them breaking. Oh, there's some water bug coming up here on our right. As their name indicates, they're often found in aquatic environments because they do need to drink quite a bit of water. So, unlike the wildebeest, they don't do too much migrating. But just like the greater kudu, only the males have horns. So those three water bugs here on our right are females. <laughs> I see some yellow-billed storks coming up on our right. They are carnivorous, so they'll eat small animals like frogs, fish, even other smaller birds. They may seem pretty small themselves, but they do have a wingspan of about five feet. Then further back down that trail, you might catch a glimpse of another antelope. That is a scimitar horned oryx back there. Something really cool about them is that they can go an extremely long time without drinking water up to nine months if necessary. Well, it looks like we've come to the end of our journey through the reserve for the day. But we had some really good luck with seeing all of those animals. Uh, folks, make sure to come and visit us again really soon. 
no two safaris are alike. Those animals definitely make sure of that. You never know which ones might be migrating through the area or even right across the road. I'm gonna drop y'all off at the nearest warden's post and from there, it's just a short little trek back to Harambe Village. But even though you may not live close to Africa, you can still do things to help out all these animals and the ecosystem that we all share together. You can recycle, repurpose, and reuse, support conservation organizations, but most importantly, spread the word. Educate your friends and let them know they can do things to help out too. The more of us that come together to help out, the greater the impact we can make. And that's what Harambe Wildlife Reserve is all about. Harambe means to come together in Swahili. Well, we're gonna head on up and in Harambe, we don't say goodbye. It's just too sad, too final, and we do hope to see you folks again real soon. So instead, we say Kwa Harini, which means to go well.